Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential equation with complex numbers. We have i to the power i to the power z equals i and we're going to be solving for z values. Z is an unknown. If you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel that focuses on number theory, algebra and trigonometry which is called cyber math, cyber with an s. Now, to be able to solve this equation, you're probably thinking about what I'm thinking. Okay, if z is equal to 0, then we're going to get i to the power 0 equals 1, i to the power 1 equals i, right? But is that the only solution? That's what we're going to explore. Let's go ahead and find out. So to be able to solve this equation, we're going to go ahead and write everything in polar form and then go from there. So how do you write i in polar form? Good question. Now, if you consider the coordinate plane, which is also called the argon plane, we have two axes, real axis and the imaginary axis. And any number can be expressed as a plus bi, which is a complex number. Its distance from zero is given by the absolute value. So if you call this z, this is the absolute value of z, which is also known as modulus or denoted by r. And of course, this makes up an angle, theta, and that's called the argument. Obviously, there are some relationships that come from Pythagorean theorem, trigonometry, so on and so forth. But if you look at, uh, look at it, uh, you're going to realize absolute value of z is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And any complex number can be written as z equals r times e to the i theta thanks to Euler as an exponential. Now, what is our absolute value? Theta is the argument we just talked about, right? So we need to find this, uh, those two things for i, but i is kind of easy because it can be written as 0 plus 1i, which is the same as plotting point 0, 1. And 0, 1 is going to be right here. So we'll, we'll represent i by this point. And then, of course, this distance from 0 is just going to be 1 unit, so we don't really need to worry about it because 1 times anything is the same thing. So it's just going to be e to the power i theta, and theta in this case happens to be pi over 2 radians, so I can write it as pi over 2, but you're also allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it. So if n is an integer, if n is an integer, we can write i as follows. And this is also really cool because another video that I made talks about i to the power i, you can also check it out, but definitely this identity or equation can be used to find i to the power i. And you'll be surprised when you see the results. So, what about i to the power z, though? So that, that's something I need to handle, right? Well, we have an exponential formula for that. So again, comes down to Euler. Euler said i to the power z can be written as e to the power z ln i. Awesome, right? Now, this can be substituted for i to the power z, and we already know how to write i, so hopefully we can take that and turn it into a nicer, better equation. Can we? Let's give it a try. So we're going to go ahead and replace i to the power i to the z with i to the power e to the power z ln i. But then i can also be replaced with e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And of course, we'll basically raise that, this is i, remember, to the power e to the power z ln i. And that's equal to i, which is e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. But guess what? That n doesn't have to be the same integer, so we could use k. It could just be another integer. That's the fun part. Now let's go ahead and put it all together. We're going to get e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n multiplied by e to the power z ln i equals e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. A lot of nice things are going to happen here. Okay, you ready? First of all, because the bases are the same, we can do the natural log. In other words, set the exponentials equal to each other. So if we do that, we get something like this. i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n multiplied by e to the power z ln i equals e to the power, oops, I wrote an extra e, i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. The nicest thing about this equation is... I cancels out, okay? 
and then pi cancels out. You can basically divide both sides by pi, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's isolate this, e to the power z ln i, and write it as this, but we want to make a common denominator and factor out a pi because it's gonna cancel out, isn't it? So it's gonna be like one plus four pi, k, all over two, right? And then denominator is going to be pi over 2 or pi times 1 plus 4 pi n divided by 2. So a lot of things are going to cancel out, which is nice. Pi over 2, pi over 2. So we kind of end up with a ratio of two integers, right? Well, integer times pi plus 1. So there's a pi involved too. And so we can go ahead and write it this way. Now, what happens if n and k are equal? Good question. If k equals n, which remember I told you, they don't have to be equal, but if they are equal, then we get something nice because this becomes one. We get e to the power z ln i equals one. And from here, you can safely say that z ln i is equal to zero and z is equal to zero, right? Yes and no. Why? Let's find out. So basically, this doesn't only give you zero, you see? So there's a lot of layers here because you're allowed to replace one with something like e to the power two pi m, right? There should be an i there, shouldn't there? Yes, two pi m i. Did I use that over here? Well, I didn't need to. Anyways, so here, notice that z is not only zero and z actually becomes something interesting. z ln i equals two pi m i. And then if you divide both sides by ln i, c equals 2 pi m i divided by ln i. So it comes, down, it comes down to finding ln i. How do you write ln i in another form, right? Well, it brings us to the concept of complex logarithms. And to find the logarithm of a complex number, you have to find the logarithm of the absolute value plus i times the argument you must multiply by the i and then add to this. And this comes from the very fact that z can be written as absolute value of z times e to the power i times argument of z. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, z is in this case i, so absolute value of i is 1, ln 1 is 0. Boom, that's gone. And by the way, that's a real ln, really. So ln i becomes i times the argument of z, but remember the argument of i is pi over 2, right? But with a caveat, you can add multiples of 2 pi. So maybe I should use 2 pi t for this. Every time I'm trying to use a different integer, because they don't have to be the same, there are different branches, obviously they have to agree on something. But anyways, you get the idea. Now let's go ahead and substitute that here. z equals 2 pi m i divided by ln i, which is 2 pi m i divided by i times, now again, I'm gonna make a common denominator and take out the pi, because it's gonna cancel out, and that'll give me one plus four t, one plus four t divided by two. Awesome. Now i pi cancel out, i pi, i pi, this two will be flipped and multiplied, and of course multiply by m, z is gonna be four m divided by 4t plus 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? That's kind of weird, right? m and t are all integers, by the way. So, for example, if t is equal to 0 and m is equal to 1, then z becomes 4 divided by 1, which is 4. Okay, so you're saying z equals 4 is going to work? Yes, you know why? Let me tell you. It's fun. i to the power i to the z, right? If z is equal to 4, you get i to the power i to the 4th, but we know that i to the 4th is 1, so i to the 1st power is i. You see, it satisfies the equation. There are many more solutions which you can find. Now, let's go back here and find out, now what happens if n and k are not equal and they're different? Well, you can pretty much choose anything you want. Let's say if k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, right? Is that possible? Well, from here, you can get something like this. e to the power z ln i equals 4. k is 4. That's going to be 4 pi plus 1 divided by 8 pi plus 1. 
And if you plug it in, is that gonna work? Well, you kind of need to do the natural log and then go from there. Or you can try writing this in polar form, by the way, that's a positive real number, which means when you try to write it in polar form, the argument is gonna be zero radians or two pi or any multiple of two pi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.